Hello guys, I'm Dr. Anjan, Pharmacology Faculty at Nairo and I welcome all of you to today's session of INACT November 2022 Pharmacology. So guys, the exam has been done and dusted. The MCQs which have been asked, see, usually, you know, the questions, if you look at the questions, 60 to 70 percent questions were on the easier side, 20 percent questions were moderate and 10 percent were very difficult. But anyways, it was a balanced paper as it always happens with the uh, INI set and the topics were uh, the frequently asked topics. There, there were not much weird topics. It was very less in pharma. So it's a recall based session. So there might be some change in the questions or the options here and there. So I, I must warn you about that. The exam was conducted in two sessions. So I'll be discussing the MCQs into session one and session two. Right. And uh, I, but I might must warn you that uh, I've tried my level best to segregate them into MCQs of session one and session two. But there might be some MCQs which might have found their way from session two to session one and vice versa. That is human error and that can happen. So guys, let's begin with today's session. So let's begin with the first question, guys. Uh, the first question, a patient who is a known case of HIV and it started on a combination active ART antiretroviral therapy after five months of treatment he develops hyperpigmentation of the palms of hands and soles of feet what is the most likely drug causing this so look at the options option a nelfinavir b amtricytabine c abacavir d zirubudi now among these options there are two drugs which are particularly uh, associated with pigmentation. One is amtricytabine and another one is zirubudi. But what's particularly asking is about pigmentation of the particular part of the body that is palms and the soles. And that is what is seen with amtricytabine. So amtricytabine, it can cause amtricytabine, it can cause pigmentation of the palms and the soles. And that is because of excessive deposition of melanin in the palms and soles. What, what is the reason? We don't know about that. So one is pigmentation of palms and soles that is seen with amtricytabine. But I did say there is another drug which causes hyperpigmentation, but of another body part. And that is zirubudin, guys. Zirubudin, it causes hyperpigmentation of the nails, right? Hyperpigmentation of the nails. So remember, this type of MCQs, they are asked on INI set and how they go about it. If you look at the history, initially they'll give it in words, like they've given, given in words, hyperpigmentation of palms and soles. And what they follow after a couple of years is they give the image. Like for example, the same MCQ would be repeated like this. A patient was started on uh, antiretroviral therapy. Then he had this particular side effect shown in the image which drug has caused it your answer would be amtricytabine or they can give you nails pigmented nails and which drug has caused it your answer would be zirubudin right so guys here our answer is amtricytabine now moving on to the next question is an image based question and it's not a difficult one the below image shows life cycle of a virus which among uh, among the following drugs acts upon step five so you can look at different steps. Step one, it is the attachment. Second two is entry, right? Then reverse transcription, then nuclear import, then integration, stage five. So stage five here, it, it is about integration. Then there is transcription, translation, assembly, and maturation. Now see guys, here there are different drugs acting upon these stages. And by looking at the virus itself, you might have guessed by now, which is the virus in question here? It is the HIV virus. and the question asking is the stage five or integration is is targeted by which drug so in other words it's a very simple mcq as i said in the beginning itself it is asking which of the following is an integrase inhibitor raltegravir and fuvirtide tenofovir zidobudin now see raltegravir tegra tegra has been taken from integrase Tegra has been taken from integrase and integrase inhibitors before vir, before vir, all of them, they will have Tegra. So Raltegravir is the right answer here. So I've discussed about this. Multiple steps can be targeted, right? 
So if they ask you about block of the binding or step one, step one binding, our answer could be a CD4 blocker or CCR5 blocker, whatever they give you the target in the uh, MCQs, right? They can give you a reverse transcriptase inhibitor like NRTI or NNRTI, integrase inhibitors they have asked here. They can ask you about which drugs block stage 8 or 9, assembly or maturation. This is blocked by protease inhibitors. They block both maturation and assembly. So it's not a difficult MCQ as far as, see, sometimes it's, we think that images are difficult. But they might be difficult in other subjects. But in pharma, usually the images are not that difficult, right? So your answer is Raltegravid, guys. Now coming to another image based MCQ, an antiarrhythmic drug was sh uh, is shown to have the following effect, right? This is the effect that is seen here. It is effective both in atrial as well as ventricular arrhythmia. Identify the drug. And now again, this is this is a damn easy question. And if you remember, I have talked about this that at least, at least, so what I've said, at least remember that Q, at least remember that Q for quinidine and Q for QT prolongation. I've told you this time and again in the lectures, the reason being they love to ask about quinidine causing QT prolongation. Now just look at this, what has happened here. See, after giving the drug, the red color, this is the normal graph, the red color is after I have given the drug. So after I give the drug, what happens, you can see here, there is a delay in depolarization. But most importantly, what has happened here is there is also a delay in repolarization. So here, and that is because of potassium channel block. So class of drug that causes significant potassium channel block as well as sodium channel block that is because of delay in depolarization. This is characteristic of class 1A drug. So class 1A drug, class 1A drug like quinidine, class 1A drug like quinidine, they can delay repolarization. And because of that, because of that, they can cause QT prolongation. QT prolongation. So the same MCQ they have asked you earlier, which of the following drug can cause QT prolongation? Your answer was quinidine. Now what they have done, as I said earlier, uh, they'll ask you an MCQ, then they'll change that MCQ into an image. So they, they've changed that MCQ in an image where there is QT prolongation and they've asked you which drug has caused this. And that is because of potassium channel block causing a delay in repolarization. Right, so QT prolongation or delay in repolarization, it is caused by two classes, class 1A and class 3. These are commonly asked and they will be asking you this frequently, frequently. So class 1A and class 3. If you cannot remember every drug in class 1A, at least remember one drug, quinidine. Q for quinidine, Q for QT prolongation, right? So A is the right answer here, guys. Uh, coming to the next MCQ, which among the following is a false statement regarding statins? Now, this MCQ, I, I would say it's a difficult one. It's not an easy one. All right, false. L let us look at these statements first of all. Option A, although HMG coenzyme A reductase inhibitors substantially reduce the risk of cardiovascular events, there is a mild increase in lipoprotein A, right? So that is one option. These drugs should not be stopped even in severe conditions like injury, surgery, etc. Option C, it can be given with verapamil and other enzyme inhibitors. Option D, with long-term use, there is a slight increase in incidence of type 2 diabetes mellitus. So see, regarding option A, let me tell you something about the um, statins. Now, statins, usually they have two kinds of effect, hypolipidemic and pleiotropic. Hypolipidemic effects, and remember, a decrease in LDL. This is the main effect. This is the main reason why we use statins, right? The, the collateral effect or side effects are, I mean, uh, the effects which can be seen other than decrease in LDL are a decrease in VLDL and triglycerides as well. Plus, it increases HDL. So, these are hypolipidemic effects. But there is one effect. It is not a hypolipidemic effect, rather it is a bad effect because it increases what lipoprotein A. Now why does it increase lipoprotein A? Now that is something which is controversial because lipoprotein A is not good, it is bad. But why it is increasing? So you know, the structure of LDL and lipoprotein A, they are quite similar. So suppose this is a cell. Suppose this is a cell and this is my LDL receptor. 
See, LDL is taken away by these LDL receptors and a lipoprotein A, it can also be taken away by these LDL receptors. Now what statins do, I'll not go into the details of mechanism of action. What statins do, statins their main mechanism is by blocking HMG coenzyme reductase. They do increase expression of LDL receptors in your cell and they take more LDL. They take more LDL and that is the reason why LDL decreases. Now you would ask then why not lipoprotein A? Why lipoprotein A does not decrease? The reason is pretty simple. The affinity, the affinity of LDL is more for LDL receptor as compared to lipoprotein A. So when LDL receptor increases, they take more LDL as compared to lipoprotein A. As compared to lipoprotein A. So relatively more lipoprotein A remains in plasma. So this is one plausible explanation that can be, that can be present and is the reason why there can be an increase in lipoprotein A. Now, this is a true statement, guys. This is a true statement, right? Now, before I move ahead, there is another effect of statins, pleiotropic effect. And pleiotropic effect means what? These are beneficial effects, but they have nothing to do with decrease in lipids, like antioxidant effect, anti-aggregant effect, anticoagulant effect, the atherosclerotic plaque stabilization or vasodilatation because of release of nitric oxide so they do ask mcqs on these effect of statins so one we have seen right one we have seen second is uh, these drugs should not be stopped even in severe conditions like injury surgery etc now that is also true we need not stop them in surgery or injury etc because they have nothing to do with that right option c it can be given with verapamil and other enzyme inhibitors now this is the statement which is false and this is our answer. Now, if you look at if you look at this, then usually what happens is why why this is false is because see number one statins statins they are metabolized by cytochrome P450 enzymes, right? All statins are metabolized by CYP3A4, whereas two statins. Fluvastatin and rosuvastatin. These are metabolized by CYP2C9. Whereas pravastatin, it is not metabolized by cytochrome P450 enzymes. It is not metabolized by microsomal enzymes. Now, guys, all of you know, all of you know that statins. They do cause myopathy, isn't it? Statins, they do cause myopathy. Now, what happens when I use a drug like verapamil or any other enzyme inhibitors? See, verapamil, it blocks CYP3A4. So, it will block metabolism of most of these statins except fluvastatin, rosuva and pravastatin. And by blocking that, verapamil or other like drugs, if I block CYP3A4, it would significantly increase the risk of myopathy causing rhabdomyolysis and acute renal failure. Right. So this interaction can be seen. But this contraindication is not mentioned usually in textbooks. But for most statins, except these statins like fluvastatin, rosuva or pravastatin, it is mentioned in the drug label. Drug label that these should not be used with enzyme inhibitors. With enzyme inhibitors like uh, verapamil or other CYP450 inhibitors. So you understand, if I use a CYP3A4 inhibitors, there would be myopathy. If I use a CYP2C9 inhibitors specifically, which are pretty less, more drugs are inhibitors of CYP3A4. So if they can ask you next word, if I want to use a statin, if I want to use a statin with an enzyme inhibitor, then which one should I prefer? And obviously my answer would be pravastatin. So C is the answer. Option D, with long-term use, there is a slight increase in the incidence of type 2 diabetes mellitus. That is a true statement. The reason being, we have discussed this, statins, they do cause insulin resistance. Right, so insulin resistance, insulin resistance is a side effect that can be seen with statins and niacin statins and niacin they can cause insulin resistance okay i remember another point here which is important see 
statins they do increase lipoprotein A, right? But this is something that I asked you many years back. Which class of hypolipidemic can decrease lipoprotein A? Now remember, niacin it can decrease lipoprotein A, right? So which increases lipoprotein A? Statins it decreases lipoprotein A, niacin. So here C is the answer, guys, because of enzyme inhibition. Another MCQ on statins. Lipid profile of a patient who suffered from acute coronary syndrome is given. He has LDL of 127 grams per deciliter, HDL 32, triglycerides of 20, 278 milligrams per deciliter. Which drug can be used for treatment of this condition? Now look at the options. Option A, phenofibrate 160 milligrams. B, rosuvastatin plus phenofibrate. C. Rosuvastatin 10 milligrams. D. Atorvastatin 80 milligrams. Now the clue here. Now see, if I want to find an answer to an MCQ, I need to find the clues. The clue here is the patient has acute coronary syndrome, right? He has already suffered. That means he is a patient of ASCVD or atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Why this makes difference? right so let us let us try to understand now see statin therapy statin therapy see there are three intensities of statin therapy high intensity three intensities of statin therapy high intensity moderate in intensity both are preferred low intensity is usually not preferred now when do i prefer high intensity statin when i when i my intention is to decrease the level of ldl more than 50 percent Moderate in intensity 30 to 49 percent, low intensity 30 percent. Why low intensity is not preferred? Because it does not have significant effect on mortality. Now coming to this part, when is it that I would go for high intensity or moderate intensity clinically? Clinically, what are the markers? Number one, remember high intensity is preferred when the patient has already suffered ASCVD. So he is having, he is a patient of stable angina. He is a patient who already had an attack of. Uh, myocardial infarction or stroke right thromboembolic stroke that is that is what it means he is a case of ascvd or patient never ever had an attack of ascvd but his ldl levels are very high what is very high more than 190 milligrams per deciliter in that case i'll go for high intensity statin now what do you mean by, mean by high intensity statin dosing of statins based upon potency like i've included two drugs which are more commonly used like rosuvastatin is more potent than atorvastatin so rosuvastatin 20 to 40 milligrams the effect would be equal to atorvastatin 40 to 80 milligrams so both of these so these are these these would be called as high intensity statin but on the other hand suppose there is a patient who does not have any ascvd he never had angina he never had a, a mi attack or stroke but his ldl is high his LDL is high, but how high? High, but lesser than 190 milligrams per deciliter. In this case, I'll be going for moderate intensity statin therapy and lesser dose like rosuvastatin 5 to 10 milligrams or atorvastatin 10 to 20 milligrams. Now, this is the basic thing you need to understand to answer such MCQs, which are clinical based. Now, let us go back to the question. And you have to find the answer, comment the answer. Now you look at you look at the situation, right? I want you guys, right? You might not have answered it right in the exam. It's okay. It's not an easy MCQ. It's a difficult one. Many of you would have made a pass or answered it right or wrong. It does not matter. But now, once I've told you the concept, can you comment the answer? Comment the answer, guys. What is the answer? Do you think? So, first of all, this is a case which falls into which intensity, high or low? It falls into intensity wise high intensity so i'll be using statins i'll be using statins i'll be using statins so high intensity high intensity means i'll be using so rosuvastatin is not high intensity 10 milligrams so atorvastatin 80 milligrams is the answer here now many of you would have gone for phenofibrate thinking that triglycerides are high but there is not the reason here i'll be using phenofibrate uh, because <coughs> statins they can also decrease triglycerides so i have to give a try of statins and see how triglycerides respond. I, I might not need to use a fibrate. Now see, it might look, you know, lucrative to combine a statin with a fibrate. But the problem is, 
statins do cause myopathy fibroids also cause myopathy so there would be hell of a risk of myopathy if we combine right so there is a reason why guys d is the better answer here okay now moving on to the next question guys which of the following is true regarding mimantine so mimantine all of you know mimantine is an nmda blocker right so look at the options which is true uh, its therapeutic effect is due to action on nmda so to be specific it is nmda blocker so this is true right it is reserved for mild uh, sorry moderate to severe disease now this is also true moderate to severe disease it is used as monotherapy and should not be used with other cholinesterase inhibitors three it is false because it is rather its status is used as add on drug it is given in the daily doses of 15 to 30 milligrams per kilograms it is false so its daily dose is you know around 5 to 28 milligrams od its daily dose is 5 to 28 milligrams od 5 to 28 milligrams od is a daily dose and if you look at this uh, then obviously what you get the answer here is 1 and 2 1 and 2 are true so b is the right answer now regarding mimantin what what do we need to know is see mimantin simple thing is that mimantin is it is an nmda blocker which is used in mild to moderate alzheimer's as an add on to cholinergics as simple as that now this is what i need to remember now do i need to remember the dose as well it has been asked once no you don't see you cannot remember doses of each and every drug for a disease it is not possible and that is that is one part where you have to understand in competitive exams you cannot remember everything because there is so much of information and there is only so much you can remember right so here one and two is the right answer guys now this is again an interesting one an experiment is being conducted on a cat spine to study the effect of cat acetylcholine the blood pressure is recorded at each intervention and is shown below what does this graph indicate mascarinic action of acetylcholine nicotinic action of acetylcholine antagonism of acetylcholine potentiation of acetylcholine so let us have a look at this graph so what is being given to an animal so cat is given here so even dogs can be used so this was done by dale and what dale did he took a cat or a dog and gave intravenous acetylcholine now when i give iv acetylcholine what happens you can see here with iv acetylcholine initially look at the blood pressure this is the effect on blood pressure there is a decrease in blood pressure so iv acetylcholine is given there is a decrease in blood pressure and you can see here the dose of acetylcholine was increased and when you increase the dose there is a further significant decrease in blood pressure right so first of all why is acetylcholine decreasing blood pressure this is something we have discussed in our classes that whenever i give acetylcholine there is a decrease in blood pressure and this is because of stimulation of m3 receptor m3 receptors which are present in the endothelium where they increase calcium and this calcium stimulates enos or endothelial nitric oxide synthesis which produces vasodilatation vasodilatation so this this graph a and b this graph a and b the effect that is seen it has been depicted here but you can see in graph c was happening so this is for a and b now what's happening in graph c you can see here atropine was given previously and then acetylcholine is given then there is no increase in blood pressure because whenever i give atropine and i give acetylcholine here then atropine will block m3 receptor will block m3 receptor and that is why there is a normal blood pressure there is no change in blood pressure here there was a decrease in blood pressure here there is normal blood pressure but look at the dose 50 micrograms the dose is important but if i look at graph d then what's happening what's happening in graph d is i increase the dose significantly to 5 milligrams of the acetylcholine when i increase the dose what's happening here you can see when acetylcholine is used at high doses 
with atropine. Acetylcholine is used at high doses with atropine, then there is an increase in blood pressure. Sharp increase in blood pressure. Now, what is the reason here? What comes into picture here is, you have to understand this, this acetylcholine at high doses, at high doses, what it is stimulating is your nicotinic receptors. Nicotinic receptors. Yes. And these nicotinic receptors which are pre present in your adrenals as well as in your ganglions, they will increase release of catecholamines and that would increase blood pressure. That would increase blood pressure. So this overall response that is seen is called as reversal. This is called as reversal of acetylcholine. Reversal of acetylcholine on blood pressure. So you can see. And this was given by Dale. So Dale's reversal of acetylcholine effect on blood pressure. Reversal means what? There was initially a decrease in blood pressure followed by an increase. And that increases because of which receptor? Nicotinic receptor. So in other words, the MCQ is asking here to us, uh, the blood pressure recorded intervention is shown below. What does this graph indicate? So this graph is what? Reversal of acetylcholine, which is because of which receptor? Which receptor? Nicotinic receptor. So is it mascarinic action of acetylcholine? Now see, this is mascarinic, but this experiment is about reversal. It's not about mascarinic effect. Reversal and reversal is because of nicotinic receptor. So answer is nicotinic action of acetylcholine. That is something you have to understand. What does this graph represent? Right. So this is not an easy one. It's a difficult one. But anyways, if it is repeated, now you can understand the basic concept of why these things are happening. Now patient is brought to the, uh, with altered sensorium and seizures. Attender shows the lab report which reveals elevated transaminases. Uh, trans so Liver is compromised basically. Which of the following can be used in this condition? Diazepam, lorazepam, alprazolam, midazolam. So whenever you know, right, whenever there is some problem with the liver, then the benzodiazepines of preference are the short acting like the lorazepam temazepam oxazepam Estazolam. Now this MCQ has been asked umpteen number of times. You can, cannot even count how many times they have asked. Right. Sometimes the answer is lorazepam. Sometimes it is oxazepam. So these, these are the MCQs. So there would be some problem with the liver. And because of the problem with the liver, which drug should be used? The answer here is lorazepam. So it's an easy one. Easy, easy peasy one. It has been repeated many times. Right. All of the following side effects are more commonly seen with carbamazepine then ox carbazepine except is a repeat it has been asked multiple times ox carbazepine was synthesized it was synthesized to decrease hypersensitivity particularly which is caused by carbamazepine so ox carbazepine has lesser hypersensitivity so you name any hypersensitivity like rash steven johnson syndrome aplastic anemia a granulocytosis, all of these are lesser with ox carbazepine. But when ox carbazepine was synthesized, we found out we decreased hypersensitivity, but we increased something that is hyponatremia, right? And this hyponatremia is a consequence of SIADH. In other words, it is dilutional hyponatremia. So hyponatremia is the right answer here. It's an easy, easy one. It's an easy one, right? match the following diuretics in column A to their side of action in column B. There were a lot of match the following, but as far as pharma is concerned, the match the following MCQs were not difficult, right? I mean, uh, the matches were quite easy. The only thing was you had to have patience to match. So let us match, let us match here, let us see. Column A and column B, PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. So guys, estazolamide, it acts upon PCT. So this is how I'm supposed to answer A4. Thick ascending loop of Hanley, it is for loop diuretics like torsemide 1, 
डिस्टल ट्यूब्यूल और डीसीटी डिस्टल कन्वर्टेड ट्यूब्यूल इट इज फॉर क्लोर तलेडोन और थ्री कलेक्टिंग डक्ट कलेक्टिंग डक्ट इज फॉर वेजोप्रेसिन गैस सो वेजोप्रेसिन इज नंबर टू सो ए फोर बी वन सी थ्री डी टू ए फोर बी वन ए फोर बी वन A for B1, C3, D2. So C is the right answer. So as I as I told you here, the difficulty part is not in uh, not not in answering this, but rather making that you know combination. Otherwise, you can see it's a very basic question. Where do these diuretics along with vasopressin on which segment do they uh, do they act? And that's a very basic MCQ they can ask you, right? Now, dorsolamide is what, guys? Now. This is a very simple MCQ. Dorsalamide is what? It's a top topical ocular carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, which is used for treatment of glaucoma. Right. So dorsalamide and brinzolamide. These are topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors which are used in glaucoma. Other. Now I I don't I I I have no rating for this MCQ even. It is such an easy MCQ. right so it is kind of an mcq that is asked in uh, your second year ug exams right match the following drugs column a with uh, their contraindications in column b right so morphine morphine where, where is it contraindicated a4 head injury amiodarone i just now told you that class 1a and class 3 drugs they cause qt prolongation so qt prolongation amiodarone it would be contraindicated in a patient who is at risk of tosadis um vigabatrine so vigabatrine where is it contraindicated even if i don't know this even if i don't know this i'll skip to option d estrogen estrogen it does cause it does cause thromboembolism so two so remaining one c c is three or vigabatrine is contraindicated in pregnancy it can cause teratogenic effect in pregnancy so what i get here is A four B one C three D two, A four B one C three D two. So option A here is plum. So I told in the beginning, uh, this match the following. They they do increase a little bit uh, the complexity of the question because it is not one MCQ. <laughs> It's a mixture of four MCQs in one MCQ. Right, four questions in one question, but they're easier one. Right, you would agree with me on that. This is not that difficult. Match the following drugs in column A with your targets. Another match the column, right? Match the following. All right. Let us see. Option A, trastuzumab. What is trastuzumab? A four. It is her two blocker, right? Infliximab. What is infliximab? TNF alpha blocker. So B would be three. Sirolimus is M three uh, M two blocker. So it would be C would be two. Imatinib is BCR ABL tyrosine kinase inhibitor one. So what do I get here? A four B three C two D one A four B three C two D one so option D, right? So again, these are mechanism of action of drugs, and these are pretty basic questions, right? As I said in the beginning, match the following. They will not. They will test your knowledge. That is obvious, but more they will test your patience to make this you know jumble jumbled up options together. All right. Uh, let's have a look at another next question, guys. A patient with erectile dysfunction is given sil day na fil, right? The penile erectile function is found to be improved after therapy. This is mediated by cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP, calcium, phosphatidyl glycerol, and inositol phosphate. Now, what is sildenafil? This is a simple MCQ, guys. It's not a difficult one. What is sildenafil? Sildenafil is nothing but it is a blocker of phosphodiesterase five. And by blocking phosphodiesterase five, it increases cyclic GMP. And cyclic GMP produces vasodilatation. So answer is B. Cyclic GMP is the right answer. And this MCQ has been asked earlier as well. It's a very basic MCQ. I mean, it falls in easy category, right? It's not a difficult. It is not even moderate. It is an easy MCQ. So sildenafil, tadalafil, these are phosphodiesterase five inhibitors used for treatment of erectile dysfunction. Next question, guys. A hospital is conducting study to check efficacy of statins in multiple centers. There are four to five patients, and half of them receive drug, and half receive placebo, right? And neither patients nor clinicians know what who got what. So double blinded, right? The this is best described as which phase. Now see, you look at the number of patients, and you tend to get get confused. Like only four to five patients, 
right but there is a clue where does the answer lie here right checking efficacy means you get the clue it can be either phase 2 or it can be phase 3 right i don't know why they have given 4 to 5 patients or is it is it a recall bias i don't know but there is the clue that will tell us is it phase 3 or phase 2 the clue word is multiple centers yes phase 2 it is usually unicentric whereas phase 3 is usually multicentric so multiple hospitals are taken in phase 3 now what gives away the answer here is multicentric so the answer is phase 3 answer is phase, phase 3 other uh, you know uh, things about phase 2 and phase 3 I have discussed in classes will not repeat that now the MCQ on clinical trial which of the following is correct regarding the clinical trials investigational new drug is done after phase 4 now this is false the reason being as soon as a drug goes into clinical trial it is given as a designation of IND investigational new drug right so after I designate it as investigational new drug it then moves into phase 1 clinical trial right so a drug which is in the clinical trial it is called as an investigational new drug as simple as that not up to phase 4 phase 4 is also called as post marketing surveillance this is true and even if you don't know anything by this only one option you can you can get the answer no, that, that is the beauty of mcqs you don't need to know each and every option if you know at least one sometimes you can answer so phase 4 it happens after marketing so it is called as post marketing surveillance it has been asked in neat pg as well as nict in previous years so it is indeed a repeat mcq in that sense phase 3 is always double blinded it is false it is usually double blinded mind the english language not always usually phase 2 is done in healthy individuals is false what do we do in healthy individuals is phase 1 and 0 yes phase 1 and 0 these are done in healthy individuals but not phase 2 so answer is plum plum answer is option b right all right match the following teratogenic drugs with their teratogenic effects again not a difficult one as i said lithium lithium 1d lithium lithium 1d lithium is it causes abstinence anomaly chloramphenicol gray baby syndrome so 2 it is c warfarin it can cause nasal hypoplasia or depressed nasal preach thalidomide causes phocomelia so all of them we have discussed it's an easy peasy it's a very easy one so 1d 2c 3 b 4 a 1 d 2 c 3 b 4 a option b simple one right a young man sustained scorpion sting two hours ago on examination his blood pressure blood pressure is 1 8 by 6 respiratory rate is 32 it is increased complaints of breathlessness so he is already developing pulmonary edema right so see scorpion bite can cause hypertension it can cause pulmonary edema nevertheless whatever may be the presentation with scorpion bite if serious presentation cardiovascular presentation is there then we go for the drug that is sorry we go for the drug that is prasocin is a drug of choice for scorpion bite all of you know that cardiovascular presentation prasocin but if it is cns presentation these patients can also have seizure if there is seizure, I, I do go for midazolam in these patients, right? For treatment of, or you can go for lorazepam as well, whatever you have at your dispensation, right? So, prazosin. Now, again, is this a new MCQ? Sorry, sir. No, it has been repeated a lot of times in NEET PG, INI, sir. You name the exam and it has been repeated everywhere, right? So, prazosin is the right answer. All right, so this is a little bit complicated one. A patient who is known addict, the clue word, the clue word is addict is brought to the hospital with intoxication of an agent ocular examination shows the following so what does the ocular examination shows us apart from a beautiful eye what is there this beautiful eye has a shrunken pupil 
or there is meiosis. So meiosis, there is meiosis, there is meiosis and this patient is an addict. So just imagine by now your neurons should start tickling. What could be that possible substance of addiction, right? Ocular examination shows the following, which of the following is true regarding this condition. So all of you know guys, this is a case of opioid intoxication and opioids, they do cause what? Meiosis. Right. Which of the following is true? This action can be reversed by phenylephrine, cannot be reversed by levonorepinephrine, caused due to activ activation of edinger westphal nucleus. Tolerance develops due to long-term use. Now let's have a look at what could be the answers. First of all, see, why why opioids they do cause meiosis let me explain this to you so this is your edinger westphal nucleus from parasympathetic nervous system this is your pupil and normally what happens when the parasympathetic nervous system or edinger westphal nucleus fires there is meiosis we know that it is also controlled by the gaba ergic neurons so suppose this is one neuron which releases GABA, which releases GABA and you know GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So GABA inhibits the effect of edinger westphal nucleus and prevents meiosis. Now who controls GABA? Opioids, what happens is there is mu receptor here, opioid mu receptor. So what opioids do? If I give opioids, what's going to happen? Look at this. If I give opioid, mu receptor is inhibitory subtype GI. So opioids, opioids, they will stimulate mu receptor, which is inhibitory subtype and block release of GABA. If I block release of GABA, this inhibition is gone. And once inhibition is gone, gone there is significant stimulation of edinger westphal nucleus and that would be responsible for meiosis so this is how opioids they cause meiosis by removing removing the breaks from gamma now see in other words opioids they do cause meiosis it is because of an increase in parasympathetic effect via edinger westphal nucleus right now now let us go back to our options this action can be reversed by phenylephrine so what is the true true option we're searching for the true true options here now see, this action can be reversed by phenylephrine. Yes, it can be partially reversed. So it can be a true option. It can be a true option. Cannot be reversed by levonorepinephrine. It can also be a true option. The reason being, see, levonorepinephrine is, uh, is uh, actually a prodrug of norepinephrine that is used as a vasoconstrictor. It is used as a vasoconstrictor with local anesthetic, or it can be also used as a nasal decongestant, nasal drops. So it has nothing to do with it, it cannot be reversed. It is caused due to activation of edinger westphal nucleus. It is also a true statement. Tolerance develops due to long-term use. This is false. This is false. Tolerance does not develop. Tolerance does not develop because, you know, uh, tolerance can be seen to opioids to all effect except meiosis, constipation, convulsion, three effects. So meiosis, there is no tolerance. So here there are three true options. So I don't know if this MCQ was where multiple options can be true. So A, B, C would be the answer. Or if this MCQ was single one and they had asked you which is not true, then D would be the answer. Anyways, whatever they might have asked, whatever they might have asked, we had to understand the basic concept behind it so that if the MCQ is repeated, I should go for the right answer. Got the point? So because the opioid induced meiosis is caused by exaggerated parasympathomimetic response it can be reversed by phenylephrine which is a midriatic drug but the uh, reversal is not 100 percent partial reversal can be seen so this is partially correct a urine urinary alkalinization can be most useful in which of the following toxicities beta blocker calcium channel blocker aspirin acetam acetaminophen See, urine alkalinization, I've discussed this, is an easy MCQ. It is usually done for acidic drugs. Acidic drugs because they would make the drugs much more ionized in renal tubules, water-soluble, 
and facilitate excretion. So acidic drugs like aspirin, phenobarbital, methotrexate, these, these are the drugs for which I can do. So answer is aspirin, right? So urine alkalinization can be done for aspirin. So for aspirin, there are two things they ask. I can do one this. Second, what else I can do in case of aspirin toxicity is dialysis. Look at the next MCQ. <laughs> it was asked in the same session, right? And alkalinization of urine will be helpful for removal of which drugs? And your answer is weekly acidic drugs. So it's two MCQs from the same basic concept, right? So is the right answer. A pregnant female is on SSRI for depression. Which of the following would be seen in the newborn? Now see, delayed milestones, ADSD, low Abgar score, persistent pulmonary hypertension. Guys, all of them, all of them can be seen. Though it is debatable plus minus because there are multiple studies which say that these effects are questionable. There are multiple studies they say this effect can be seen plus minus. So here we'll go with A, B, C, D. All of them, they can be seen. Yes, but still in pregnancy, should I use antidepressant or not? It's a million dollar question to which nobody has got any answer. The reason being, if I use SSRIs in pregnancy, it would improve the mood of the female. But the problem is there would be some fetal outcomes which can be worsened, but those, those are also debatable. Right? But if I don't use SSRI in pregnancy, the problem is that female can have suicidal tendency, there can be decreased appetite and that would also cause IUGR. So, you know, it, it's a problem, it's a double-edged sword. But anyways, so remember all of these can be seen plus specifically paroxetine has been seen to cause uh, cardiac defect. Mostly the septal defects can be seen with paroxetine. So most teratogenic is paroxetine is the most teratogenic one. So A, B, C, D, all of them, they can be seen with these drugs, right? So this is the answer. Which of the following statements are true? beta inhibits mycobacterial ATP synthesis, pyrazinamide, so are true, right? So beta inhibits mycobacterial ATP synthesis. This is true statement. I've told you time and again, nowadays second line drugs, the only drugs they're going to ask you is either beta or delamanid or pretomanid, right? Pyrazinamide is enzyme inducer, false. Rifampicin is, rifampicin is used only in TB, is false. Is, is used in TB, is used in leprosy, is used in mycobacterium avium complex, it is used in brucella, it is used in meningococcal meningitis. Lot of uses. Iazoni acid inhibits mycolic acid synthesis, that's true. So here, as it seems, there are only two options which are correct, A and D. So option C is the right answer. So it also falls under easy category. It's an easy MCQ. So you can see in this exam, there are lots of easy MCQs. Some are difficult one. And that is how INSID is supposed to be as an exam, right? Meropenem is indicated in treatment of, right? So what is the answer? Let us see. See, what do we know about meropenem is the carbapenem. And carbapenem, all of you know, they are wide spectrum drugs. They cover gram positive and negative. And they cover aerobes and anaerobes as well, right? So let, let us look about and, uh, intra-abdominal infections. Can I use them? Yes, they do cover, they do cover anaerobes. And gram-negative anaerobes are usually <coughs> they cause intra-abdominal infection. Can I use them in MRSA? No. No, I cannot use them in MRSA because in MRSA, I cannot use any beta-lactam. So no beta-lactam can be used. So I use vancomycin in MRSA. Febrile neutropenia, yes, I can use it. Because in febrile neutropenia, I usually use a drug that covers pseudomonas. Now, this is my you know single most important criteria. And meropenem, do they cover? Yes, gram negative aerobes, they cover pseudomonas as well. Diabetic foot, yes, we can use them in diabetic foot. It might be because of gram negatives, like pseudomonas can cause this. It might be because of uh, it might be because of staphylococcus, but if it is because of staphylococcus, then I have to add vancomycin for 
adequate coverage because that staphylococcus might might be MRSA. So what is the answer here? A C D A C D C is the right answer, right? So that is so this this MCU. This is not an easy one. <coughs> you can say it's a difficult one, right? It's a difficult one. Drug given preoperatively in thyroid surgery to prevent bleeding. Now this is something I've discussed, guys. Your answer is iodides. So whenever you use iodides, what they do? They decrease primarily vasculogenesis. Plus they decrease the size of thyroid gland. It becomes more firm. It is easier to remove. Plus decrease vasculogenesis decreases the risk of bleeding. So answer B is an easy answer. I've discussed this in your lectures. Is not a difficult one, right? Match the anti aggregants drugs mechanism of action. Again, it's a simple one, guys. Aspirin 2 cyclooxygenase blocker, isn't it? Aspirin 2 cyclooxygenase vector blocker, aptifibatide is 1, GP2B3 blocker, Vorapaxar PAR, PAR 4. Prasugrel is P2Y12 inhibitor 3. So A2, B1, C4, D3. A2, B1, C4, D3. A2, B1, C4, D3. So option A is the right answer. <laughs> so, uh, you know, answering takes lesser time. More time it takes in searching the option where the match is correct, isn't it? So again, so this is not a difficult MCQ. And in anti-aggregants, this is the bare minimum they can ask you is the mechanism of action, isn't it? Patient of low sartan for three years now has been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes mellitus. HbA1c is 8. So there is glucose intolerance. He is moving towards diabetes mellitus. What drug should be given instead of low sartan? Now here the answer is tell me sartan. This is something I have discussed. Low sartan, it causes PPAR gamma agonism and because of which it can decrease insulin resistance, right? But this particular effect among the ARBs, it is maximum with, it is maximum with telmisartan. And there is a reason why telmisartan is the answer here. And this is something, there is only one point, there is one point I tell you in the lectures about telmisartan that it has maximum PPR gamma agonism and that is what they have asked. A is the right answer. Drugs causing contraction of ciliary muscles acts via. Now see ciliary muscles, these are smooth muscles. And this is the basic concept that I teach you in G Pharma that whenever smooth muscles they contract, it is because of GQ subtype of receptors which act by increasing IP3 that increases calcium, right? Whereas whenever smooth muscle relax, it is because of GS subtype which increase cyclic AMP and that causes relaxation of smooth muscle. Now if ciliary muscles are contracting, if uterus is contracting, if bronchi are contracting, then it is because of IP3 DAG. Option B is the right answer. So I've told you this in my lectures in G Pharma, even if you don't know anything, and if you know it's a smooth muscle that is contracting, the receptor has to be GQ subtype. If it is a smooth muscle relaxing, the receptor has to be GS subtype, right? Now guys, let's begin with the questions from the second session. And uh, to begin with an image-based question, identify the following drugs denoted as A, B, C in the image, right? So you can see A, B, and C. So what are these denoting? You can see here. See A, it denotes cyclooxygenase. So what blocks cyclooxygenase is aspirin. B, GP2B3A. GP2B3A, these are drugs like aptifibatide, tirofiban, apsiximab. These are other drugs, but we have aptifibatide. I'll stick to that drug here. Right. And C is PAR or protease activated receptor. It is blocked by a drug called as Vorapaxar. Now, since we are discussing anti aggregant, let us have a look at another receptor here. 
ADP or P2Y12 blocker. It is blocked by drugs like Prasugrel, which we have in the option, right? But this is not denoted or this was not denoted in the picture. A, B, C. So A, Aspirin, B, Eptifibatide, C, Vorapaxar. A, Aspirin, B, Eptifibatide, C, Prasugrel. It is wrong. A, Aspirin, B, Eptifibatide, C, Vorapaxar. Now this is right. So option B is the right answer here. So again, as I said, the images uh, that they have asked in this INI set were more about the mechanisms of drugs acting. And they are not difficult one, guys. Believe me, they are not difficult. The targets are given, you know the drugs, and you can, you can get to the right answer straight away. Right, so B, option B is the right answer here. Identify the wrong statement about disulfiram use in alcohol dependence. Does not stop craving. So it is true, it, is, it does not stop, uh, stop craving, it is rather an aversive agent, it creates aversion to alcohol. Accumulates acetaldehyde, this is also true. Inhibits alcohol dehydrogenase, this is false. Rather, it inhibits aldehyde dehydrogenase, starting dose is around 250 mg, that is also true. Now see, what is false, the reason being, See, alcohol is metabolized into acetaldehyde by alcohol dehydrogenase. Acetaldehyde is metabolized into acetic acid by aldehyde dehydrogenase. And the second enzyme is what is blocked by disulfiram and not this enzyme. That is the reason why that option was false. And because of this, there is accumulation of acetaldehyde that is toxic. And it causes a wide range of symptoms from palpitation, tremor, dyspnea, uh, chest tightness, sweating. All right, uh, diphoriasis or excessive sweating and that is why it causes aversion to alcohol it causes aversion to alcohol it does not decrease craving so you can see here why the answer is option c it inhibits uh, alcohol dehydrogenase is a false option this is the answer now is, is this a difficult one no it's an easy one guys right Match the mechanism of action of antiarrhythmic drugs. Now look at the mechanism, look at the drugs. Is it a difficult one? No, guys. The only thing is, as I said, you have to match. So, digoxin A. A4. Digoxin is a sodium potassium ADPS blocker. B. Abutilide is a potassium channel blocker. B3. Asmolol is a beta blocker. 1. Quinidine is a sodium channel blocker. B2. So what is the answer? A4, B3, C1, D2. A4, B3, C1, D2. So option D, it is the right answer. So again, it's a pretty basic MCQ. I mean, there is no difficulty except matching, right? Regarding antipsychotics used in schizophrenia, correct matches are. Now, this is a moderate level MCQ. 5 basic 2 antagonism causes weight loss. Now, this is uh, false. This is false, this is not a correct match because 5 bc 2 block does not cause weight loss, rather it causes weight gain. Mascarinic antagonism treats EPS, this is true. So we use drugs like benzexol or benztropin, bipyridine, these are anticholinergics or mascarinic antagonists which are used. 5 bc 2 blocks treats negative symptoms, this is also true and D2 block treats positive symptoms, this is also true. Now, to be specific here, now remember, 5-SU2 blockers, these are atypical antipsychotics. So, what you have to remember, atypical antipsychotics, they are good against both positive and negative symptoms because they block 5-SU2 as well as they block D2, right? Whereas, these are most, I mean, D2 block is typical about typical antipsychotics. And they are active mostly against positive symptoms because they are purely D2 blockers. Now, this is how you can remember atypicals, they are good against both positive and negative. Typical, they are good against only positive symptoms. So, positive symptoms, they are because or treatable because of D2 block, whereas negative symptoms are treatable because of 5 SC2 block. So, here, uh, the correct matches are B, C and D. These are the correct matches. And these three would be the right answer, right? Dose response curve of three drugs were given. Pick the straight uh, right statement. It's an easy one, guys. 
let us have a look at the options c is a non competitive antagonist now c is a non competitive antagonist this is false this is not correct because if you look at a b and c these are all agonist a and b are agonist this is the right option a and b and even c is an agonist a is more efficacious than b is false efficacy of a and b are same you can see the height is same b is more potent than a it is false because here potency of a is more than b is more than c the reason being you know lesser is the dose more is the potency and the lesser dose here is for a because it's the dose axis isn't it lesser dose is for a followed by b followed by c for the same particular response so potency a more than b more than c so it's not a difficult one a and b are agonist is a true statement so dose response curve it is one of the most frequently asked graph in pharmacology right hemolysis in g6 period deficiency can manifest with which of the following drugs primaquine chloroquine penicillin tetracycline see among the anti malarials right the one drug that causes hemolysis in g6 period deficiency is primaquine primaquine has a definitive uh, uh, you know history of causing hemolysis quinine and chloroquine there are some cases of hemolysis but it is not definite so best answer here is primaquine so drugs causing hemolysis in g6 period deficiency it has been asked a lot of times mcqs it's a simple mcq and i've given you the mnemonic here is dr manish right d for depson m for menadion or vitamin k a for anti malarial like primaquine and for nalidixic acid nitrofurantion i for isoniazid s for sulfonamide so these are the drugs mnemonics are given which drugs they do cause hemolysis second thing they ask you is it a pharmacogenetic condition yes it is a pharmacogenetic condition so this mcq can be asked in a different way as well which of the following can be drug can be associated with a pharmacogenetic condition primaquine will be the answer right now again sildenafil x by right x by so this is a repeat of your uh, mcq from first session in first session they asked you the answer was by increasing what cyclic gmp and that is by inhibiting which enzyme phosphodiesterase 5 i've already discussed the details i'll not go into those details again right so the sildenafil blocks phosphodiesterase 5 increases cyclic gmp produces vasodilatation and that is the reason why it is a drug of choice for treatment of what erectile dysfunction right Finasteride used for treatment of male pattern baldness. It acts by inhibiting what? Is it a difficult one? No, it's a very easy one. And the answer is five alpha reductase inhibitors. The most recent MCQ that asked you is which of the following drug? It acts by decreasing DHT or dihydroxy testosterone. Again, your answer was finasteride. So five alpha reductase blockers. It blocks conversion of testosterone into five HT. This is what is blocked. Sorry. Not 5-ST, DST, dihydroxy testosterone. So what it decreases is DST because 5-alpha reductase it is an enzyme which converts testosterone into DST. And so yes, option B is the right answer. So it's a simple one. Which of the among the following are agonists at beta 2 receptors? Let us have a look. What is DP vephrine? It is a pro-drug of epinephrine, and epinephrine is an agonist at alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 so do we have beta 2 yes we have beta 2 with dpvephrine dopexamine what is it an agonist right? it is an agonist at d1 and beta 2 do we have beta 2 yes we have beta 2 what is mira background it is an agonist at beta 3 so here we have beta 2 do we have beta 2 here no beta 3 phenol dopam it is an agonist at d1 and alpha 2 so do we have beta 2 here no so there is no beta 2 in both of these so what is the answer here 1 and 2 so look at the option a b c d what we have 1 and 2 option c it is the right answer so this is an mcq with moderate level of difficulty right moderate level of difficulty dp vephrine we have discussed dopexamine mira background phenol dopam all we have discussed the only problem here is you have to put all that scattered knowledge together at one place to solve such a kind of an mcq right True statement about bioavailability and route of administration. 
A, B, C, D, right? You can see I, V, subcutaneous, I, M, oral. Now, if, if you don't know the answer, let me tell you something. Bioavailability, at least you know this, that the bioavailability percentage by IV is 100 or it is 100% or it is 1. IM and subcutaneous, it is more but it is lesser than IV. It is somewhere around 75% to 100% or the range of fraction is 0 0.7 to 0 0.75 to 1. Oral is a wide range from 5% to 100% or 0 0.05 to 1. Rectal, it is more than oral. The reason being first pass metabolism is 50% by rectal road. So it is 0 0.3 to 1. Transdermal, it is more. It is more than even I, I am or subcutaneous. So it is 80 to 100% or 0 0.8 to 1. Now, if you know this, then your answer here, what would be the answer? IV F is equal to 1. This is right. Subcutaneous is right. I am is right. Oral is wrong. It is 0 0.05 to 1. So what is the answer here? A, B, C. A, B, C. So it's, it's an MCQ, which is difficult. It's not an easy one because you know about option A, B and C. It's a difficult one to find out. But anyways, A, B, C is the right answer here. If this MCQ is repeated about bioavailability, remember about the fractions of the most important rules of administration, right? Drug which increases trabecular outflow. See guys, anti-glaucoma drug, they're very important. They're very important. Their mechanisms are frequently asked. So anti-glaucoma drug, they will decrease IOP or intraocular pressure by three mechanisms, either decreasing aqueous production, increasing eviosclerol outflow or increasing trabecular outflow. Now see, beta blocker, alpha 2 agonist, epinephrine. There is one thing common. These are drugs related to which system? Sympathetic nervous system. So any drug used in glaucoma related to sympathetic nervous system will act by decreasing aqueous production. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, another class of drug. Prostaglandin analogs like latanoprost, they increase uveoscleral outflow. Whereas myotic agents like pilocarpine, they increase trabecular outflow. And the new drug is netarsudil. Netarsudil, it also acts by increasing trabecular outflow. So netarsudil is the answer here. And netarsudil, it is a rokinase inhibitor, which is approved for treatment of open angle glaucoma. It is available as a single agent, as eye drop. It is also available along with latanoprost. For resistant glaucoma, it can be combined, right? Oral drug given for smoking cessation, veriniclin, sevimelin, mascarin, scopolamine is, is, is a very easy MCQ. It has been asked multiple times. Smoking cessation is, is very commonly asked MCQ. And I don't even think I need to explain here. The answer is veriniclin. And the other oral drugs which are used are, it is bupropion. And we do use gums and lozenge of nicotine. That is, that, that is also oral use of drugs. So answer is option A. What is rituximab? What is rituximab, guys? Rituximab is a monoclonal or polyclonal to, to begin with. Remember, first of all, is not a polyclonal antibody. It's a monoclonal. See, the MAB itself is telling you what is the answer. It's a monoclonal antibody. So if I know that, now, now the answer would be either option A or option C. The only thing I have to find out, uh, what is the target? What is the target? Now see, rituximab, the target is not CD50, is not CD50, rather it is CD20. And the reason why it is the answer is option A. So it, it's, it's a drug that was initially designed for treatment of cancer or tumor, like non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. But with time, it has gained a lot of other uses. And most of them are inflammatory disorders or autoimmune disorders, like autoimmune hemolytic anemia, immune thrombocytopenic purpura, rheumatoid arthritis, myasthenia gravis. So it has a lot of uses, right? So rituximab option A is the right answer. Look at the next question. It's an easy one. Hypertensive patient with potassium is high. There is already high potassium hyperkalemia. Sodium-137, urea-42, creatinine-3.5. Which of the following drugs should be stopped? The clue here is potassium, hyperkalemia. So in hyperkalemia, which of the following drugs should not be used? Pyrosamide, it can be used. Losartan, it should not be used. The reason being, so here this is the answer, it should not be used. The reason being the RAS inhibitors. Be it ACE inhibitor, ARB, DRI, be it spironolactone, all of them, they can themselves cause hyperkalemia. And there is a reason why before starting RAS inhibitors, 
I need to have a look at potassium levels. Otherwise, the patient can have arrhythmia because of hyperkalemia. So B is the right answer, as I said in the beginning. It's not a difficult one. It's an easy one, right? New drug application is filed after which phase? So another MCQ on clinical trial. See what happens is new drug application is filed before the drug goes into the market. And it happens after phase 3 or in phase 3. So I file a new drug application in India is filed with CDSCO and then the drug goes into the market, right? Then the drug goes into the market. So it happens after phase three. That is the reason why in the previous session, I've discussed that there's an uh, MCU that asked you, phase four is called as post-marketing surveillance because it happens after the drug goes into the market. So phase three is the right answer here. Atropine is contraindicated in. See, your, your answer is close angle glaucoma the reason being atropine is a midriatic and the cause of close angle glau glaucoma itself is midriasis the other things which are mentioned here these are uses these are uses of atropine like malignant glaucoma i use atropine because see why malignant glaucoma is seen is you know what is malignant glaucoma it is not cancer it is a post surgical complication ocular surgery Usually what happens, the lens moves in the forward direction and blocks the angle. So I have to pull the lens back and for that I have to contract the zonules. And the zonules can be contracted, the lens can be pulled back by atropine. Anterior uveitis or corneal ulcer, I use atropine because in these inflammatory disorders, what can happen is there can be synergy formation between the iris and the lens. And that can raise the IOP, intraocular pressure. Now, so that there is no synergy formation between the iris and the lens, I need to keep 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 the iris moving. So I'll give atropine, pupil dilates. Effect is gone, it constricts. I'll give, again give atropine, pupil dilates. So my aim is to keep the iris moving throughout the day. So it is not static. And there is a decreased risk of synergy formation. So other three are uses. One is a contraindicated close angle glaucoma. Is it a difficult one? No. It's, it's an easy one. It's an easy one, right? And for same reason, for same reason, see what happens is atropine is contraindicated in closed angle glaucoma because it is an anti-mascarinic and it causes metriasis. Any drug that is anti mask that has anti anti-mascarinic effect should not be used in glaucoma, like tricyclic antidepressants and antipsychotics, both typical antipsychotics as well as atypical antipsychotics, they have anti-mascarinic effect. We have discussed this, right? Which of the following agent causes QT prolongation and is used in ventricular arrhythmia? QT prolongation and is used in ventricular arrhythmia. So similar MCQ was asked in your uh, first session. Do you remember? So I told you there, Q for QT prolongation, Q for quinidine. Nothing much. Q for QT prolongation, Q for quinidine. Your answer is, your answer is quinidine. So it's a simple MCQ. It's a repeat from session one. Gallstones as a side effect can be caused by which drugs? See, if you remember, I've told you gallstones can be caused by two classes of drugs. Uh, one, these are fibrids, hypolipidemic drugs. Second, octreotide. So there are there are two drugs which usually cause gallstones, and these are two drugs which are usually asked in MCQs, in our exams. So option A, HMG coenzyme reductase inhibitors, no. Bile acid binding resins, no. Estimibe, no. Your answer is PPR alpha agonist because fibrates, they are PPR alpha agonist. So answer is option D. So this is an MCQ based upon mechanism of action. These are two drugs which cause gallstones. Octreotide has been asked many times. Fibrates, they have been asked. Right, so answer is option D. Now coming to the next, antidepressant contraindicated in angle closure glaucoma. This MCQ is based upon the concept I discussed just now. What is the answer here? I've just discussed. I've just discussed. I've just discussed. Let, let me go back a little bit. I've discussed closed angle glaucoma, which antidepressants are not to be used. Try cyclic antidepressants. Why? Because they're anti muscarinic So what? That is the reason why they will cause what? Midriasis. And midriasis is something that can precipitate acute angle closure glaucoma. There's a reason why it's a simple MCQ. Our answer is what? What do we need to find here in the options? Which one is our TCA? And our answer is what? Amitriptyline, isn't it? So C is the right answer, guys. Which of the following is a novel antidepressant? 
Novel antidepressant, guys, here your answer is Vilazodon, and this is a repeat MCQ. Repeat, it has been asked already. And why, why it is a novel antidepressant? Because it is an SSRI. Not only that, it is not only an SSRI, plus it is a 5ST1A agonist. So it is used or reserved for treatment of major depression. Major depression because it is not a pure SSRI. Another novel antidepressant is Vortioxetine. And Vortioxetine is also an SSRI. It is 5ST1A agonist, then 5ST1B and D antagonist, 5ST3 antagonist, 5ST7 antagonist. This is the reason why it is also called as MSAA. Vortioxetine is also called as MSAA or multiple serotonin agonist antagonist because you can see it is agonist and antagonist at multiple serotonin receptors msaa so mcqs they they have asked on velazodone vortioxetine would be the next target and what i think is what they're going to ask next is which is an msaa antidepressant right other drugs here asinapine loracidone volanserine a b and d these are antipsychotics they are not antidepressants right which is the appropriate serum plasma concentration of lithium for treatment of prophylaxis of mania it's, a, it's an easy one guys you know the concentration of uh, lithium is from 0.6 to 1.0 to 1.5 so usually for prophylaxis we follow this for treatment we follow this 0.6 to 1 milli equivalence per liter is for prophylaxis Treatment 1 to 1.5. So prophylaxis and treatment here the better answer is 0.6 to 1.5 milli equivalence per liter. It's a simple MCQ and I've told you lithium is a very important drug. Every exam has at least one MCQ on lithium, right? A patient presents with high grade of fever, seizure, peripheral blood smear reveals plasmodium falciparum. What should be used for treatment? IV artesunate, chloroquine, oral quinine, oral doxycycline. Easy one, easy peasy. What is the diagnosis first of all fever seizure falciparum that means is a case of severe falciparum malaria involving the brain that is cerebral or alzheimer malaria and what is the drug of choice iv artesunate is the drug of choice i have to give continuous infusion of iv artesunate for 48 hours two days then i can continue the normal regimen that is i use for plasmodium falciparum that is act all others are oral drugs, no use. Though I can also use IV quinine. If IV artesunate was not in the option, I could have gone for IV quinine as an answer, right? Next, which of the following drug X on site 1 mentioned in the image? Now you can see, look at the site 1. Site 1, it is affecting the binding. So it can be either a blocker of CD4 or CCR5. Option, look at the options. Maraviroc, Zidovudin, Raltegravir, Retonavir. Among these, there is only one drug which acts upon attachment that is Maraviroc, which is a CCR5 blocker. Which is a CCR5 blocker. So again, tell me guys, do you think it's a difficult MCQ? No, it is not. It's an easy one. And I told you, as I said, the images which has been asked in this exam, they were not difficult. If you understand the basic concept of how a drug acts, it's pretty simple. Right? Measure the side effects of the following drugs. Let's have a look at the side effects. Methotrexate. So guys, what methotrexate causes is an anti-metabolite. Anti-metabolite drugs. So anti-metabolite, antifolate, pyrimidine, purine analogs, all of them, they cause mucositis. sc tretin. See guys, sc tretin use, it can cause abortion. Cyclosporin is nephrotoxic too. Thalidomide is teratogenic or phocomelia. Though acetretin is also teratogenic, but thalidomide is teratogenic. So uh, acetretin is both teratogenic can cause abortion. So I'll go for three abortion. So A4, B3, C2, D1. A4, B3, C2, D1. B is the right answer. So this is an MCQ with, it's an easy one because all of these MCQs, they have been asked multiple times in different exams. 
they've compiled together and asked this right pyrimethamine plus sulfadoxin plus artesunate is used in it is used in malaria so it's an easy one it's an easy one right which of the following oral diabetic anti diabetic drug is safe in renal failure is a repeat is a repeat mcq and answer is linagliptin so remember l for linagliptin l for liver so liver is the organ of excretion liver is the organ of excretion for linagliptin so it is the reason why it is safe in renal failure so it's a repeat one there is nothing much to say here so guys this brings us to the end of the session and i would like to thank all of you for participating with such an enthusiasm in this session and uh, these uh, mcqs which i have discussed there were a couple of new topics like that uh, blood pressure reversal by estyl colin please go through these topics because i and i said they have a tendency of asking these questions but anyways uh, these are the questions which were asked in the exam i have tried my level best to explain these uh, to you so that they can be beneficial for the upcoming i and i said exams as well as neat pg exams so at last guys i would like to wish all of you all the very best for the upcoming neat pg exam and uh, work hard believe in yourself and you will cross the line take care bye bye